Hello and welcome to this week's Culture Mosaic. Today, we'll weave our way through new and exciting news from the arts, music, and cultural realms here in Vietnam. Our journey will meander through the outskirts of Hanoi to discover laterite as the material behind exquisite artworks. Then it's a trip to Ho Chi Minh City to meet a 3D mapping artist before we learn more about an ongoing project of a photographer that is capturing Vietnam from far above and down below. All that and more coming right up here on Coach Mosaic. Laterite utilized in artistic creations. Then in our On the Mic, we'll chat with 3D mapping artist Julian Neuer. And later on, photographer Justin Maud and his love for Vietnam. Twenty-seven contestants from eight ASEAN countries joined the final round of the Miss ASEAN Friendship 2017, which was held in Puyin Province's Thuy Hoa City on July 1st. The title of Miss ASEAN Friendship 2017 went to Nutanan Nari from Thailand. Two out of three Vietnamese contestants made the top ten, including Huynh Thi Yen Nhi and Tho Mai Thuy Dương, with Yen Nhi winning the first runner-up. Second runner-up went to Benedicta Hida Mercy Cheris from Indonesia. The competition not only promoted the beauty of ASEAN women, but also delivered and encouraged the exchange of cultures among ASEAN nations. Celebrations for the International Yoga Day in Vietnam took place in eight cities from June 17th running up until July 2nd and attracted the participation of some 7,000 people. Nong Nai City saw the largest crowd of 1,200 people. Co-organized by the Indian Embassy and the Indian Consulate General in Vietnam, the event is part of activities to celebrate the 45th anniversary of bilateral ties. Yoga is a 5,000-year-old physical, mental, and spiritual practice originating in India. The United Nations General Assembly declared June 21st as the International Day of Yoga back in 2014. Vietnamese fashion show producer and model Jessica Mingang held the J Summer Fashion Show on the Hoover Dam in the United States last week. She uses famous landmarks as the background for her shows, something that's made her show stand out from others. This time, she transformed the Hoover Dam into a runway. The Hoover Dam provides hydroelectricity power to many areas in the United States. Ten designers, half of whom Mingang has worked with in previous shows, displayed their collections during the event. Jessica Mingang has used famous landmarks including uh, the uh, Grand Canyon, the Eiffel Tower, and London's Tower Bridge as backdrops for past shows. This was Ang's 20th time using a famous landmark for a show. You may have visited or seen the unique murals of Tan Thanh Village in Quang Nam Province. Now there's actually another place where you can find similar murals at An Bing Island in Quang Ngai Province. Ten artists crossed the sea in order to get here and they put their passion into these murals, which they hope will help preserve Vietnam's turtle and marine environment. After three days of hard work, 11 murals were completed. Those were three memorable days for the local people and will give them something to talk about in the future. Aside from combating poaching, the murals are a great way to help conserve the environment. During festivals in Hue, there is always an artist who has attracted audiences with her very unique style of singing. She is Camille Huyen, a woman from Hue who lives in Switzerland. By combining the Hue style of singing with Western chamber music, she has brought a unique musical experience to her audiences. We'll get a chance not to meet this talented singer in the following report. The special music of Camille Huyen was first introduced to Vietnamese audiences at the Hue Festival in 2006. 
cùng với cây dầm hát nó mang tính chất của cái nhạc thỉnh phong của phương tây giai điều nó là rất nhẹ nhàng nó phản phất một chút nào đó cái thảnh ca trong các cái dạo đường trước đây miền nam hay là dạo đường phương tây và mình nghĩ với cái dầm ca này thì có thể trình diễn được Camille Huyen's real name is Huyen Tôn Nữ Cầm Hồng. In 2004, she released her first album entitled Huyen Cầm. The album marked an important highlight in her musical career. The songs are strange but familiar because they combine the Western style of playing music but with rollaway music. <laughs> nó mang âm hưởng ngũ cung nhiều hơn là âm hưởng thất cung cái sự mới là ở trong cái âm nhạc của hàng mặc tử mình đã sử dụng những cái âm nhạc rất cổ truyền của việt nam mình hoặc là của huế mình như là ca huế chầu văn hạt bồi thơ ngắm thơ hoặc là ngay cả ca trù của miền bắc hoặc là dân ca nó nằm trong album say trăng rất nhiều cái cách mà ngắm thơ của cái bài say mẫu nga đó là một cách ngâm nó vừa Việt Nam mà vừa đọc thơ theo lối của châu Âu. The album Sai Chang was released to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Han Maktu's birthday. It's available in several European countries including Germany, Switzerland and Poland. Laterite is a soil and rock type that conveys the simple and rustic traits of the people in the northern region of Vietnam. It creates a unique feature that cannot be found anywhere else in the country. As home to an abundant source of laterite, Thaik Thep District in Hanoi has seen its residents use laterite as a building material. Through time, however, they have discovered that laterite is not just a cheap, durable and unique material, but can also be used as a material for art creation to make statues, sculptures, and decorative items for construction. In this week's edition of Culture and Lifestyle, we'll get a chance to visit a village in Taikta District to learn more about how the people here have created artworks from Laterite. Simple, rustic, but conveying importance. These are all made from laterite, from temple gates, to statues and sculptures. In the past, laterite was used to make bricks for houses. However, laterite is now used to make beautiful and artistic works. Thấy cái đá nó đẹp mà cái kết cấu của nó nó cũng tương đối vững chắc. Chúng tôi nó cũng chuyển sang đục đẹo hay làm được những người dơ là có phân cẩu nó 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 hỗ trợ nữa, máy móc hỗ trợ nữa chúng tôi khai thác từ cái cái khối lớn để làm được những cái cái sản phẩm mà lớn nó thành khối đa liên và chế tác các những cái con giống hoặc là những cái sản phẩm nó đa dạng chứ nó không thuần túy như các cụ ngày xưa chỉ làm gạch xây tương không. Trần Văn Nghiêm has been a lateralized sculptor for more than 10 years. He has created hundreds of works during that time with simple chisels and brothels. Nhất là phải chọn cái phôi đá nó về mịn đá. Màu sắc nó cũng đẹp mà nó vừa phải nó 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 đá nó không quá dã mà nó cũng không không quá non. Qua khâu chọn phôi rồi mình phải ý đồ mình chế tác nên cái cái tác phẩm gì thì mình phải hình dung ra cái nội dung cái tổng thể của nó mình kiểu như mình vẽ và đề trong đó rồi mình sơ chế thì rồi xong rồi thì mình sẽ gọt tỉa dần dần đi
Museum works in Tan Hiu Dung Stone Processing Workshop, the only workshop of its kind in Kakut District. Dung has loved Lateri since he was small, when he played with a Lateri elephant statue at a nearby temple. It is the simple and rustic beauty of the stone that inspired him to open this workshop and make sculptures from laterite. Despite considered a type of rock, laterite is still soft at first and will harden through time. Thế nói trong cái cây được cắt xong rồi thì nó gặp rất nhiều khó khăn bởi vì đá nó không được cứng như cái đá khác. Thì nhiều khi làm sao gần xong nó lại lại hỏng mất chẳng hạn hoặc là cái cái, cái tay nghề người thợ của người nghệ nhân để chế tác ra hồng nó thì nó không có nhiều để mình lựa chọn. Nó cả cái tỉnh cả cái tỉnh khu thất huyện rất là thì là một hai nghệ nhân là người ta chế tác được. Cái chất liệu thì cũng càng ngày càng khăn hiếm đi. It takes many hard working people to make lateral work. From choosing a stone and coming up with ideas to sculpting the work. However, out of love for the craft, they carry on putting soul into the inanimate stone. Culture Mosaic is a weekly journal here on VTV International looking to give you, our viewers, the latest scoop on the culture scene here in Vietnam. Whether it be the diversity and richness of century-old heritage or the dynamic and exciting vibe of a modern Vietnam, we hope to bring you the many facets of the cultural and artistic soul here in the country. So don't go away as we have many more exciting news coming your way. Three D mapping is a visual art form using a projector to show three D animation videos on object surfaces. It has been becoming more popular in Vietnam and especially in big cities such as Ho Chi Minh City. The southern metropolis, therefore, has attracted several international artists, including Julian Onoyer. With his own creativity, he creates models by himself to project his three D artworks. We'll get a chance to meet him in this edition of On the Mic in order to learn more about some of his projects here in the country. Julian Neuer is a French 3D mapping artist. In 2011, he by chance entered a 3D mapping contest at the Kono Festival in Italy. That was when he stepped into the 3D mapping art scene. After a two-year break in Australia, he moved to Vietnam to join the art and design community in Ho Chi Minh City. He has participated in several 3D mapping festivals such as Oxymar, Kaleidoscope and Fest, as well as other events incorporating music and dance. Thank you so much for joining our program. So what sort of things usually um, inspire you to create 3D projection artworks? I like everything that is urban. Um, the hip-hop culture is something I'm really into. If you look a little bit at my work, I use a lot of uh, texture that is uh, concrete and all this darkness as well, like when it's nighttime, concrete, uh, kind of threatening architecture, playing with the light, playing the, with the tension, this is something I really, uh, I really like, playing with the shadow, everything that has angle, triangles and uh, all these polygon shapes they will look more threatening and it crosses the word of all this urban hip-hop culture that I like as well. What is the most important thing to you during the process of making 3D mapping works? Is it a creative idea or um, professional techniques or digital tools that you use? Well, there's definitely a really important technical part and uh, it's good to starting with software uh, you are comfortable with when you are working, but uh, the idea is always uh, what makes the difference because uh, the softwares are only tools. So even with a different software, I would find a way to express what I want to express. 
3D mapping is a visual art which uses a projector to feature 3D animation on a geometric surface. A model is first built on a computer to fit the design onto a scaled down real object. Real objects are backdrops of 3D animation or architectural works, usually buildings. However, artists sometimes project their designs onto small objects. In order to produce a 3D mapping work, artists use software to combine 3D animation with lights and music. What is the favorite work of yours and can you tell us more about this? The, perform the 3D mapping performance at the Kaleido Soup event, um, it's so far the one I've been pretty proud of. Um, I did put on a lot of work in it and um, a lot of effort and I think it reflects as well the two sides of my work which is one, one side is kind of experimental, just playing purely with the shape, polygon and the light. And the other one is more like something urban and related to the hip hop culture. What is the idea behind Polygons and Lights workshop? Polygons and Lights? Well, we're modeling shape made of polygons. Um, and this is why uh, I will have all this structure looking uh, really rough with all these angles. Uh, and light because of the light coming from the video projector and the fake light, the light simulated by the 3D software. Uh, I thought there was something interesting about it, um, combining polygons and light. Basically, I wanted to share whatever I know about it, my knowledge is. I'm, I'm happy so many people participated and uh, are coming up with their own ideas. The Polygons and Lights workshop was the recent project of Julian Neuer. Held every Saturday for the month, it even attracted those who knew nothing about the art. Tại vì mình thích làm viên học hình nên mình muốn tham gia khóa học này để biết thêm một số kỹ thuật trình diễn. Nó thu hút mình đó. Mình nghe vừa vừa cảm nhận được âm nhạc mà vừa thấy được hình ảnh ánh sáng. I like the 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 combination really of making something uh, in real life the sculpting or construction or however you end up making your your uh, map and then combining that with something uh, in, in digital and I can tell you as a digital person like you don't you don't do enough with your hands you don't do enough in the real world joining the workshop participants were surprised by their own ability with the help of Julian I thought that uh, there was it was not going to be likely that uh, people were going to project their own projects at the end of the second day, but everybody did, and that was cool to see. That was fun. Why did you decide to settle down in Jimmy City, and uh, what has the art scene here offered you? They are not one reason, they are a lot of reasons. Uh, I really love Saigon, Vietnam, the food, the people, the lifestyle that I can have here. But I still do believe that it's not that important where you are, it's more important where you are doing. And in Saigon, I feel like I can do pretty much what I want. I'm doing what I love, I'm doing what I like, so... As long as I don't get tired of it, I don't see any reason for living. The art scene is uh, growing day after day. I don't even have time to really follow up. There are so many uh, great designers, uh, good illustrators, events every night, uh, art event, uh, music event. All these DJ are <laughs> popping up from, from everywhere. You have worked with uh, several Vietnamese artists in some projects combining music, dancing, visual art, and also 3D mapping, such as uh, oxymoron or standpoint theories. So what common things did you find in each other uh, for the collaboration? I feel like everybody is uh, overexcited here when, whenever there is a new project. They are really keen to bring the best of them. We can really tell that they love what they're doing, and uh, it's. Keep, keeps growing. It's, uh, I'm really impressed.
the portrait uh, standpoint theories in particular featured six Vietnamese legends. So what kind of obstacles do you face during the portrait in terms of culture to express the stories in 3D mapping as well as uh, harmonize your work with other genres? Well, standpoint theory and oxymoron are both events that are really classified in art, purely art. So I didn't really feel any, any obstacles. I felt like I was really free to do whatever I wanted. I, I work with some uh, Vietnamese yeah, artists for standpoint theory, and uh, I just I just felt like it was fitting well. We were both uh, working hard. Uh, we did our best to make it happen. Was it hard for you to understand those stories and legends? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, it, it's really different from uh, what I know. I just had to. I'm a guest here, so I have to fit in. So I'm trying to step in and understand. How it works here. Once again, thank you so much for your sharing. Now, have you ever wondered about the differences of Vietnam's landscapes such as Mok Chou or Sapa from a bird's eye view or from an angle down below? Photos from As Above, So Below project will show you these differences. This is an ongoing project by photographer Justin Mott, which presents Vietnam's beauty in a very different way. We'll get a chance now to learn more about photographer Justin Mott and his special project in this week's edition of Connecting Cultures. A breathtaking view of Mok Chou from above. This view is then shot from a normal or low angle. These are pictures from the As Above, So Below photography project, showcasing the beauty of the landscapes, people and culture of Vietnam. The photos consist of pairs of images, one an aerial shot capturing the landscape, and the other a ground view corresponding to the first image. The project, also known as An Art to Vietnam, is a two-year project from photographer Justin Mott about Vietnam. I've been saying for a long time I wanted to work on a project that was true to me and true to my heart. And I was thinking for the right idea for years, what could it be, when do I have time? I travel nonstop for work and, and then it finally hit me, you know, I, I thought I would just focus on simplify things and the idea in the project is simple it's all about the beauty of this country but it's the beauty of this country through the people through the landscapes and through the culture it's exciting because this is truly truly for me you know truly from my heart and I do feel a debt of gratitude for Vietnam I've lived here for 10 years through all my different stories that I've shot people at the orphanage have let me photograph their children um, people have let me take portraits of their grandparents. People have invited me into their homes. And I've made a living and I've made a career here through photographing this country. And so the idea is I feel a debt of gratitude. I feel I owe Vietnam something. And this is it. This is what I want to give back because there's nothing I know better than photography. <laughs> Justine Mott, originally from the United States, came to Vietnam 10 years ago for a personal project about victims of Agent Orange. He soon fell in love with the country and people, and now calls Vietnam home. Along the way, Justin met people who supported and befriended him. For Justin, Vietnam holds a special place in his heart. It is a country that has given him inspiration, inspired him and nurtured his artistic soul. Since then, he has traveled throughout Vietnam to capture the beauty of its landscape, people and culture. His work has been featured by the BBC, Time, Forbes, The Wall Street Journal and The Garden, among many others. He is also known for his role as a judge on the photography reality show Photo Face Off on the History Channel. When I came here, I was excited to just photograph everything. Everything, uh, everywhere I looked was new and fresh and exciting and inspiring for me. 
it also felt very authentic and raw. I mean, the streets of Vietnam, people selling uh, you know, beer on the streets, food on the streets. Uh, it was just so photogenic, so lively. And, and I felt people were so warm the entire time. Wherever I photographed in the countryside, uh, throughout the entire country or in the cities, people were very welcoming and very opening to me as a photographer. As above, so below is a gift to Vietnam Justin greatly hopes to complete. He has received support from friends and fellow Americans, including U.S. Ambassador to Vietnam Ted Osius, who posted about the project on his Facebook page and called it a visual love letter to Vietnam. Justin had dedicated much care and attention to this project. It is a gift. It is something that I can give back to present to, to all the people of Vietnam, whoever wants it. Some people might not want it, but if they do want it and you can benefit from it economically or just visually, you can smile at the pictures and hang them in your house. That means the world to me. You know? Yeah, so we're doing a project with uh, the above and below. Like I said, everything will be shot from above with a drone camera. And then we're shooting everything below with this. It's a medium format digital camera, so it's a very slow camera, but the images the files are huge. And so in the end, if people want to use these to blow up as billboard size or even for the exhibition, if I have them, you know, just, I want to display these images in a really big, grand way. So this camera allows me to do that. But it also forces me to slow down because you can't shoot that camera fast. You have to really stop and think before you shoot. The project is expected to take two years, during which time Justin will visit or revisit places across Vietnam. This legacy Justin plans to leave will show Vietnam's beauty to the world with the help of his photography skills. And that is also wrapped up this edition of Coche Mosaic. If you would like to provide any feedback or comment on anything you've seen here on our show, please feel free to write to us at V2V International at V2V.vn and make sure to include both your name and address. You can also log on to VTV4.vn or our YouTube channel at VTV4Go for more of our program. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of Coach Mosaic. Until then, goodbye for now.